two weeks away, and Republicans are feeling optimistic that they can take control of the Senate. But can they still screw things up? And if so, how? My next guest has a good pulse on some of the issues driving voters in the Midwest. He syndicated radio host and author of Rules for Patriots. Steve Dace joins us now. Steve, great to have you on the show today. Good to see you, Mike. How are you? I'm doing great. Let's talk about uh, what the GOP needs to do, must do, if they're going to move Harry Reid to the back of the room and end his Roach Motel, where bills go in but they never ever come out. Well, this uh, this is sort of a Sun Tzu art of war moment, uh, where if your opponent's making a fool out of himself, get out of the way and let him. I mean, if you listen to what has been on this show tonight here so far, I mean, you're seeing all the reasons why the president's median approval rating in every battleground Senate race is about 40 percent, which, of course, is dreadful. Then you look at the fact that, you know, the, those six-year itch elections since World War II, on average, incumbent presidents have lost five U.S. Senate seats, and that's even in the best of circumstances. Throw in border crisis, o uh, Ebola, Obamacare, uh, more cancellation notices going out this month. And, Mike, you know I've got really low regard for the GOP establishment. I think two of the shortest books ever written, French War Heroes and Republican Strategy. <laughs> but I'm not even sure, Mike, they can blow this one. Well, you know, I, I want to believe that, but there's some races that are very close. And I want to run through a few of them and get your take on some of them. One very near and dear to your heart, Iowa. And by way of full disclosure on some of these races, I have endorsed some of these candidates. We'll be campaigning with them, for them, or already have done so. In this one, it's uh, Joni Ernst versus Bruce Braley. Not Bailey, as the First Lady thought. Uh, you, you live in <laughs> Iowa. Give us your take on this race. Is Joni Ernst... Uh, going to win this race? Uh, it's her race to lose. Uh, Mr. Bailey, uh, to honor the First Lady, has fired every bullet, uh, including many blanks, at Joni. Uh, at times, she's got two programmed. Iowans have been waiting to see the, 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 the sassy gal they loved in the primary with the squeal castration ads that went viral nationally. She's come across as two programmed. But in this last debate, she went back to sort of being the off-the-cuff Joni that people loved in the, in the primary when she blew the field away. And she blew Mr. Bailey away. And, and so I think they fired every bullet they have. They've outspent her and now they're being outraised. Uh, I think it's all over but the shouting now as long as she avoids a gaffe. Uh, Georgia features David Perdue, the Republican, who I've endorsed, against uh, Michelle Nunn, the, the uh, daughter of uh, beloved Georgian Sam Nunn. Uh, again, this, this is a state that's gone bright red lately. Why is this race in play? Well, this would be political malpractice, Mike, to lose this race in this environment. Romney won this state by almost eight points uh, two years ago. It's a much more favorable environment in 2014 than 2012. And really what David Perdue is running a campaign that gives you all the stuff about Mitt Romney you liked and none of the stuff you did or didn't like and none of the stuff you did. I mean, it's, it's a listless campaign. He's running on basically nothing. That being said, you have a runoff system there. I will still be surprised if the Republicans end up losing that race, but it's going down to the water in a year that it should not have to. My home state of Arkansas, Tom Cotton, the Republican, again, a person I've endorsed, will be campaigning with this week, uh, going against incumbent Mark Pryor. Everybody thinks Cotton's going to pull that off, and I do too, but is there any possibility that Mark Pryor uh, could score the upset and end up keeping that seat? No, Mike. You look since 2002, only two incumbent senators that were polling at 45 percent or lower this late in the race have actually held on to their seats. And, and Tom Cotton has done everything David Perdue we just talked about has not done. Uh, he has uh, drawn stark contrast between he and, his, he and his opponent. I know Republican consultants don't like to do this, but if listen, if I wanted to vote for Democrat policies, I'd just vote for a Democrat. Cotton has done a really good job capitalizing on this environment, running as a consultant. That race is also all over but the shouting. We only have a few seconds, Steve, but uh, give us your take on Kentucky because Mitch McConnell is still awfully close to Allison Grimes, and she seems to have been implode, imploding, but not to the point of, of being out of the race. Well, the, the Kentucky race is similar to Kansas in that both candidates for the Republicans are struggling to turn out their conservative base. But the Democrats basically pulled out of this race this week, Mike. They're waving the white flag. And so it's just a matter of what I think McConnell's margin of victory will be on November 4th. Well, you know, McConnell is another one I've endorsed. I know he's not your favorite, but gosh, I hope he wins because no. it's all about getting Harry Reid out of the way. It really is for me. Steve Dace, thank you very much. Great to have you with us.